So yeah, this, this morning I tried to ruin the party by saying there's not much love in data unless you're a geek. Um, and uh, but I didn't really manage to ruin the party. Obviously, still a lot of people here. Um, what I forgot to say um, uh, is that uh, is the most important thing is that that data is like the strawberry. So if you like strawberry, of course you love strawberries, and, and grandmothers love strawberries because they make nice cakes out of strawberries. But usually kids like cakes a little bit better, or you know, strawberries with a little bit of sugar. And of course, to make a really good meal, what you need is love. So there is, of course, a connection between strawberries and love. And uh, that is one world of, of, of screen design. And completely different world is what, what these guys make with the games. Um, this is not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, is uh, information design, uh, is interaction design, where you actually try to achieve a certain goal where it is important to, um, to not find any problems on your way. The idea of games is to make it difficult enough so it's still interesting. Um, the idea of the work I do is completely different. I try to make programs and websites easy enough uh, so you don't even notice that you interact. And I found that, um, that when you start with the hardest thing, which is mobile devices, because the screens are so small, actually you create a very, very good base for screens with more uh, space. Um, <clears throat> there, there is an, another analogy. Um, I'm sorry, can I, can I interrupt you? <laughs> sorry. Um, there is another analogy uh, with, with the cake. And when you start with uh, screen design, um, with applications, the, the basic element, the atomic level, you know, the strawberries of what you do is in information architecture. There you have something called the content model and the mental model. The content model, in short, is um, what an application or a website is supposed to do from uh, the point of view of those who make it. Um, here, the New York Times, this is where they get to in the end. You know, this is everything they need. And it's, it's, a, it's a region I know really well because what we mainly do is designing news sites. So, of course, you need all the Twitter buttons, the Facebook buttons. You need a lot of space for advertisement. You know, you need the banner on top. You need different monetization options here. And then, of course, you need also pictures. And in the end, you know, the text is some kind of a weird shape. Um, when you look at the mental model, which is a specific term of what the user actually expects, you get this. You know, this is what the user really wants when he goes to a website like the New York Times. And even though this is not a good design, it's a much better design than the design before. Let me show you again. This is really hard to read, isn't it? This, eh, not nice, but you know, already better. And we all know this kind of design because most of us know this kind of design because that's the kind of design we have on our mobile phones. There, the people running the site cannot go that crazy because they simply don't have the space. And then for us, for us designers, this is very nice to design mobile sites because we can focus on the essentials and we can tell our clients to you know, focus as well and just tell us what is really, really needed uh, for what they do. Of course, um, oh, that's back again. Of course, uh, if you try a little bit harder, you would get to a really, really nice design. Now, we all know that newspapers don't look like this because they must make money, right? That's, uh, that's a fact, right? But then again, you look at uh, situations like these where Flipboard manage to, manages to get a deal with the New Yorker to basically have a nice layout without advertisement, without noise, you have to ask yourself, how is that possible? Isn't there a way 
that the New Yorker itself could have a nice design like that. And, uh, you know, I won't go too far into this, but, but there is a solution. Um, but let's move on with, with the design part. Um, what's important if you want to make money online is that you have to exceed the user expectations. That you have to exceed the user expectations by creating a nice user experience. Then you make money. Um, now, that's very easily said. It's as easily said as we have enough information, we don't have enough wisdom, because user experience, and I'm in the user experience design field, is just like wisdom, not something that you just do or you just get or you just try and then you find it. It's, it's more of a lucky thing in the end. It's, it's a matter of a, a lot of experience, it's a matter of a lot of testing, it's a matter of, of listening to, to your users a lot and not get confused by the many voices. Um, and the future of web design is very much a, a future where, you know, you, you try to create better user experience. And at the same time, it is what user interface design has always been. I'm not talking about games again, because games, you have to make games difficult. Um, you have to make sure that the user puts a lot of uh, has a lot of input and not so much output to make the game interesting. But in my field, the basic rule is less input, more output. A uh, famous example is Google. When you go to google.com, you know, all you need to do is type your search, your key search, and hit enter. They made it even easier now. Here it's an, ex uh, an example within the Safari browser. You know, you type less input, and Google somehow knows already that I'm looking for, some, for less input, more output. Um, these are things that most users don't realize, but they feel it. There you have a similarity with ty typography, good typography. Few people know what good typography is, but when they have it in their hands, they feel it and they're happy. They don't know it's typography. Users don't know that you know, user experience design is at work here. Uh, when these things ha happen, they just get happy and they come back. Um, applied intelligence is another thing. How many times ha have you, at least the geeks among you, downloaded an application and then it goes into the downloads folder and then it kind of stays there and then you don't remember where it was and then it disappears? Uh, these guys here um, ask you, move to the applications folder. I can move myself to the applications folder in your home folder if you'd like. This will keep your downloads folder uncluttered. Now, that's nice, right? But it's also applied intelligence. If you create apps for download, you know that there is a situation where you know, your app might get lost. I'm sure a lot of applications I downloaded, I never used them again just because they're in that messy download folder. That's applied intelligence. Putting intelligence into products, basically, that is design in the first place. It's just very hard. Um, on the screen because you have so much space. And there, getting a training on small screens uh, is, is ideal because you start focusing on the important stuff. Um, and that helps you also building better applications uh, for, for bigger screens. Another um, example is Microsoft Word. This thing has been around for so many years and it keeps on getting worse. Um, Look at all this stuff, and it says zoom 100%. Now, it seems fairly big because this is a massive beamer, but when you look at this on your screen, it's ridiculous that this is the default, like this small type here, um, that I don't need all this stuff to write. Maybe, you know, if I, if I design, I need a lot of these buttons, but as a design program, it's horrible. Um, so I, it was quite a gutsy... Uh, uh, idea, but we thought we can make this better by treating it as, as, a, as a mobile application first. So we consciously started with the iPad, which is incredibly hard uh, to design for. It seems fairly big, but actually it's just an A5 paper with the resolution of A6. It's actually really, really small to write. Um, and this is... Uh, the final result. So maybe you've seen Writer for iPad. This is the first time I show 
uh, writer for OS X. Uh, if you compare that to Word, there is a lot less stuff going on. The font is nice and big. You know, you don't need to fiddle around. You can't change any of the fonts. You have a special mode called focus mode where you only see the sentence you are working on right now because we noticed that a lot of the distraction uh, on big screens comes from the fact that you see so much text. Especially if you look at this, you know, you're constantly tempted to fiddle around here, uh, which doesn't happen so much when the screen gets smaller, especially on a cell phone. Actually, when you read these emails that have been written on the cell phone, they're, you know, they have a lot of spelling mistakes often because, yeah, you know, we're busy and we're on the train, but often they have a lot of drive and they come, you know, to the point really quickly. Those emails I get that say send with iPhone are rarely this long. Um, and the same principle went into the construction for Writer for OS X. And um, there's a lot to say about this whole pyramid, you know, from, from uh, uh, the atomic level of, uh, of uh, in information architecture, uh, which corresponds to data, you know, to the higher level of interaction design, which, you know, uh, like data shaped into information, gives you more of a, of, of a general feeling of what's, what's happening to that data, to the next level where, where information becomes knowledge, which is uh, information design in, in, in our discipline, to uh, the next highest level, which is not something that you can design, as I, as I, often, I often try to point out, right away you have to try and you have to you have to you have to have a lot of perseverance and and a lot of love and a lot of care like a grandmother baking a, a, a nice cake to get to the level called user experience and that's it <laughs>